My name's Colin Power from Into Infinity, and today we're going to be solving the world's most challenging problem of the last century, the continuum hypothesis, using just a piece of paper and a pen. Before we do, let's have a little think about this nature of infinity. It started to become quite a topic at the end of the 1900s when a guy called George Cantor described something called an infinite set and started to differentiate between different types of infinity. So here we have a line and it's divided into three. Yeah? And what George Cantor did, he said, what happens if we remove that line and you'd, you'd be left with just two? Yeah? So one third would be missing. Yeah? And then if you could, you can, you can also divide that and take out the middle third of these parts and, you, and another you know, third missing there, third missing from there. And each time we move through, we're removing a third section from the middle of, of each line. And so you can continue moving a third into infinity. Yeah, so the gap here, there's an infinite number of those gaps that you can create, yeah, those gaps there. There are also an infinite number of these things here. But if you think about it, because there's two of those, that this is a larger type of infinity than this infinity here. This infinity has one two for every one that's missing there. So that's two for every one there. So that shows you that there are different types of infinity. It was the birth of something called fractal geometry. This caused a little bit of a stir in the mathematical community, you could say, but it did lead to something which is the foundations of modern mathematics called set theory. And so the concept is that we can have different types of set. So for example, let's take all of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 on into infinity. We could say that is a certain set of number. But the problem is, is as we go through these numbers, there's a lot more numbers in between here. Look, that would be 0 0.5, for example, yeah? With 2.5, yeah, wouldn't it, there? And actually there's an infinite number of these tiny little indiv indiv divisions in between each number space. And that creates a sort of bit of a conundrum, really. Because in this sense, we could say that this is one set of numbers, and that set of numbers is an infinite set, but it's smaller than this, which they call you know, the, the infinite set of uh, real numbers and everything else like that. Yeah? Aleph 1 is all of these whole numbers, da, 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 and Aleph 0 is including all of, the, all of that set, including all of those small numbers. Yeah? To solve the continuum hypothesis, Cantor suggested that there was no infinite set that existed between those two. If you imagine it's like a, you have to think of things in, in terms of density, how many, what's the density of the numbers, you know, and so with those unit spacings of those numbers it's just going up one plus one plus one plus one plus one, whereas with the infinite decimals the, the, it's very difficult to determine uh, how much it's progressing. So you know, it could be it's an infinity even between the numbers 0, 1, for example. There's an infinite number of decimals, yeah? They can start with a 0 point, da, 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 da. And because of that nature, it creates a paradox in mathematics, you can imagine. Aleph 1 would be the whole numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 into infinity, whereas Aleph 0 would include all of the decimal fractions as well. Is there an infinity between Aleph 1 and Aleph 0? And we're going to prove that there is actually an infinity between Aleph 1 and Aleph 0. So to start with, we've got a column over here, we write the number 1 in there, yeah? That's our step 1. And over here, what we're going to do is we're going to write 1 over 1. It's a fraction, yeah? 1 over 1 equals 1. So let's go to the second step, yeah? And here we're gonna go one over two, and then two over two equals 1.5. And as we go to number three, we're gonna go one over three, two over three, and three over three, like that, and that equals two. And I'll go to the fourth step just to show you. One over four, two over four, there's a plus sign there, plus, 3 over 4 plus 4 over 4 equals 2.5. And you can see what's happening here is that every step this takes a one step, it goes one and jumps down there. When this jumps down, it jumps down just a half. And this jumps down to one, this jumps another half, this jumps to one, this jumps another half. And so this is progressing at one half of this, which is progressing at one. Yeah, and it will continue like that on into infinity. And so each one of these lines connects along like that. And really what you get is, if you think about it, you get a square like that with a diagonal going straight the way through it. Yeah? Which, and we call that the 
square root of two, yeah? If we call that a unit of one, yeah? So that's the square root of two going across that middle line there, yeah? Now, if we take LF 0.5, because it's only progressing in half steps, and so actually it goes up like this, and it goes uh, from one to one, one to 1.5, one to another, one to another. But because this is, this is shrinking yeah, in size, it's only stepping up in half, what you would get is if we turn it into our square again, this would be the halfway mark, and this would go like that, and that would be the geometry of that. And then this here would become the square root of 1.25. But you can see here that there's a geometric nature to this type of infinity. That this infinity is denser because it's compressed. And that means we can compress things to the halfway mark, the 0.5 mark. And that's why we call it Aleph 0.5. So that's resolved the continuum hypothesis. The question was, is there an infinity that is, you know, falls in that straight line between you know, the Aleph naught, the infinity of all numbers, to Aleph one, which is the infinity of the whole number set, and there is an infinity between the two, and it's the fractional numbers between zero and one. And that proves that George Cantor's conjecture that there isn't an infinity between these two wrong. And there is actually one, and it's called Aleph naught point five. And now Aleph point naught point five has many implications for a lot of other things in mathematics that we're going to look into next yeah but before we do we're going to also maybe give a bit more of a satisfying uh, solution to what this kind of means for numbers and infinite set theory so coming up next yeah will be a solution to the Russell paradox and much much more so remember to subscribe below and if you want to follow along with us and uh, if you like what you see do subscribe to our patreon and where you can get access to webinars and uh, talk to us more about all this sort of stuff directly thank you very much my name's been colin power you've been awesome and this is into infinity taking you beyond the matrix